Hey guys, Dave and Jamie here, and today we're sharing a masterclass video with you, and we love when you guys bring us... Little baby macaws! Probably one of my favorites. I say that with about a few different birds, but baby macaws are awesome, and this is no exception. <laughs> before we even had her. Oh, that's We've awesome. only had her for 30 days. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like having an autistic, you know, three-year-old with Thank wings you. for the rest of your life. <laughs> right? So We have an autistic son at home. So you're going to learn. Yeah. This is actually yeah. so, so parents of autistic children pick up on this better because there's something to draw back to from like the operant conditioning side of things. And although we've not encountered that personally and there's yeah. a huge void of my knowledge in that area, I have seen where that crossover really makes a yeah. huge difference. So, yeah. yeah, I'm excited. I think you guys are going to probably walk away with more value because of that background. Good. So, yeah. Good. The other thing I want you guys to be aware of, because you have a baby bird, we're going to be probably giving you advice that you're going to be like, hey, wow. wait, they didn't tell me that. Yeah. And there is a difference between what you do with a baby bird and what you do with an adult bird. We're sharing a lot of awesome baby bird content in this video, but to be honest, we have a baby bird course because it's five and a half hours of content that we can't give you in this short sample. So if you have a baby bird and you want to learn more, feel free to check out our website and uh, the baby bird course. Especially if you're looking for more of a how-to and in-depth uh, instructions on all the different sort of things that go into raising a baby bird. And how to do it right and wrong. So with an adult bird who is definitely not acting like a baby, we use strictly permission-based ah. That means like, hey, do you want to step up? And if the answer is no, let's figure out why not and let's solve that problem. Um, with a baby bird, if you're like, hey, do you want to step up? And the bird's probably like, what the hell does that mean? When I booked them oh, together, I was yeah. really excited about that. I was like, right? he's going to see what, what it would look like if you don't do what they say. <laughs> <laughs> she's actually, oh my God. she's actually she's, excelled at she's a, a lot. Perfect. She's she's a, she's a people person. A bird <laughs> loves people. Um, oh my god, absolutely loves people. Yeah, she's just a great little bird. I know we're not supposed to use absolute. No, that's okay. oh, that's I know, but absolute. Yes. That's all. Yeah. Anyone can walk into my home, whether it's a 12 year old little girl or my mother who's 90, and she goes right up and she cuddles and she does this and she sucks on the hair. Or she's just love. I mean, she's never ever felt like this to anybody. Anybody. We've taken her to Home Depot, we've taken her, and nothing, nothing. She never, she, she never backs off to anything. She did back off to an ice cream cone because she wasn't supposed to have it. Um, what is, I'm assuming you don't have any major challenges or are you having any struggles now? You're, or With her? With her? Yeah. Harness training. Harness training, okay. Which, unfortunately, uh, we paid a lot of money for and she hates Still refused. We, we get a harness on her, but it's, it's a lot of coaxing. And a lot of patience. It's a banana in the face. Yeah. But we get her on it. Or we get it on and her. Once and once it's, it's on her, she's, she's fine. fine. She's yeah. totally fine. She could care less that it's there. We take her places. She goes in the car. She's fine. She barely made a peep all the way here today. Okay. And, and we fall we fall back on your video, your class too, a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. The baby. We bought the baby, the baby course. course. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yes. There's so much information yes. in yes. there. It's like we, yeah. we, we dove into like how to raise your bird right. We're like, this is a long, it's like five and a half hours mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. lecture. Yeah. yeah. So, but you can see the body language. Did you see the body language part in that? With, uh, it's a small section and I film, I filmed the blue and gold macaw and then no. the freeze and there's like well, information. We, yes, we did, but. We, we watched we, it before we got her. Before oh, we got yes, her. No and then so, we keep, we yeah. keep dropping back and going back and looking at things. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Jamie wants to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I have your cookbooks, I have your pellets, I have your birdie bread, I have, uh -huh. right now I think that's all I have. The chop for the first two weeks wouldn't touch it. <laughs> wouldn't touch I call JC every day. I'm like, what do I, what do, I do? How do I get her to eat it? Blah, blah, blah. Um, we ended up putting a smashed banana. She loves bananas. A um, little smashed banana in it, mm -hmm. and she tolerated it. Okay. She'd pick out anything that was green. It oh. went flying. Okay. Zucchini, kale, spinach, anything green went flying. Okay. Um, 
Then I took away the banana and I added figs. Okay. And she tolerated it even better. Um, and then I, st uh, and then, but she still wasn't like really eating it. She wasn't. And you were weighing her? Yeah. Yeah, we have a chart. Which, uh, oh, that's another thing I want to talk about is her weight. Um, and, um, what else? Um, oatmeal. I put a little tiny bit of dry oatmeal in it and she ate the whole bowl. So. Nice. So now I kind of switch it up. I'll put banana one day. I'll put fig oh. one day. I'll put a little oatmeal one day. Kind of switch it up every day. And she's now eating the chop. But at first it was like, nope, I'm not having this. I won't eat so it. So she ate it well with the oatmeal and no banana. And the, um, yeah. So oh, you yeah. should only do that. So just do the oatmeal? Yeah, because banana is just high sugar. Yeah. So you don't want to Oh, we can tell when we give her banana how hyper she gets. Oh yeah. my lord. So if she did it well okay. on seasonal feeding with oats, okay. stick to that. Because okay. adding banana is just strange. Okay, and he was worried about the oatmeal, and I'm like, I don't think the oatmeal. It makes her face look dirty. It's better than the I banana. I have an issue oh, with her dirty face. Dirty. <laughs> Um, okay, like what about the figs? Are the figs way too high in sugar too? Yeah, we want to kind of avoid fruit if we can. So if she's consistent with seasonal feeding and oats, okay. stick to that and okay. slowly wean off things. Okay, okay. Um, the pellets she'll eat. Um, JC sent a big bag of that cereal looking colorful. Like in fact, I have some of it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a different one. Yeah, I think it's it. Oh, I left it at the house. It's okay. I know what it smells like. No, I didn't. Like. <laughs> it's that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She did loves... You mix that with something? She, you mix it? With your pellets. You mix it or he mix it? I did. did. Okay. Um, she loves the orange and the purple. She won't really eat the red or the green. <laughs> no, the dog's like that. She picks them out and drops them out. And, and the throws dogs. them and the dog eats them. Something we find really common among baby bird owners is speaking in absolutes. And they heard you talk about it a lot in this video. Yeah, if you ever find yourself saying, I love this, or my bird loves this, or hates this, you've got to question that. And we go in depth about it, but that's a common problem we see a lot. And start to question that voice that tells you an absolute, like, cause we can say with, you know, our kids, you know, like our daughter loves gymnastics right now. A year from now, she might hate it, yeah. right? So if a year from now, I'm like, we're going to gymnastics, you love it. She, she, she might have decided a week earlier that she hates it now. So if I'm still operating in that zone of like, no, you love this, obviously with a kid, that's not going to go well. And you can imagine the bird who can't communicate that as clearly, how that could get you in a downhill spiral. Yeah, the other thing I think that you guys should be really careful of that I keep hearing is um, routine. You guys seem a little... Like you oh, fall into totally routines not. really oh, easily. Totally um, and so to hear that she hates going back in the cage and you've developed this routine of the cleaning and stuff, all you're saying that entire cleaning routine is you're going back in really? soon. Yeah. It's coming. She's the one that starts so. the wrestling, not me. <laughs> <laughs> this, this illustration here, um, have you guys heard of that Maslow's hierarchy of needs? So it's a human psychology that basically is building on foundations for humans and at the top is like you've reached ultimate happiness, right? So for the last year and a half, two years, I've wanted to figure out what is a bird's hierarchy of needs. And what I discovered is that it's a pyramid with two parts. The bottom part... Oh, I bet you wanted to hear the end of that clip, but we saved that for the people that attend classes or do consults with us. It was the pyramid talk and not that kind of pyramid talk, but. Ooh, yeah. So if you want to know more about Amway, uh, <laughs> no, wrong pyramid. <laughs> wrong pyramid. <laughs> We're not telling. And the only way we can set ourselves up for success is to think ahead, how can I be set up for success? And then say, okay, has my bird already eaten? Um, if so, does my bird do better or worse training after a meal? I would say 10% of them do better after a meal, but the majority is 90% of them do better before breakfast. Um, and, and you wanna make sure you've got the bird's favorite treat. It's not about how hungry we can make the bird, it's about how, how high of a value can we have for the bird's treat, um, because it never gets it anywhere else and it has to earn it. So that's why I said when I put the bird in the cage, they get two or three pine nuts and I'll drop a few more in the dish. I want them to really look forward to going into the cage. And, um, and I treat that as a trick because I want to see more of it. So and that's kind of the overview of like, if a year from now you're like, gosh, I can't figure out this problem. Think back to that pyramid. 
and you'll solve most of your bird's problems by like refocusing on that later. You'll be able to pro like troubleshoot. Does <laughs> right. so that all make sense? It's yeah. kind of a, yeah. a broader issue, um, but it's something that we've been playing with a lot. In. So we asked these guys, what does the harness look like? Because one of their goals was harness training. So we said, what does it look like? Where are you at? I'm not showing it for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> and we decided to work with their bird to just kind of show them an intro to harness training. If you want more in depth, again, we cover this in our baby bird course and talk about how to train baby birds to accept the harness. And we just kind of wanted to give them a taste of how to get started versus what they were doing, which was just diving in, putting on the bird and being like, hey. I want to add it. something to that too, because they were like, yeah, we paid a lot of extra money to have this bird harness trained. Okay, so let's be real. Harness training a baby bird, you put the harness on it. The key is in maintaining the harness training. So starting it when they're young and maintaining it. So don't want to give a false uh, impression one way or the other. I just want to add a little clarity right there. Yeah, we want to make sure that you guys understand that there's a difference between harness training and a hot, like kind of harness tolerance that baby birds mm -hmm. have. Baby birds just have a high tolerance for most things as a general saying. So if you're wondering why we were harness training, it's because we saw what they were doing and we were like, hey, 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 let's you go down need this more route. more help with this. <laughs> so she's going to be less comfortable with me here than with you, but this is the concept. We like you. <laughs> we do. See how much better that already is? <laughs> okay, so you see how we're like, yes. it's small steps? Mm -hmm. And you have more treats. <laughs> Thanks. Will you eat the treat instead? Okay, so there I clicked because it was actually touching her. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. I, I'm seeing Thank you. You're in the TV. I don't want you in there. Yes, I'll show her the treat. This is where I want her to look. And now it's touching a little longer. Now she gets the treat. I'm like kind of hiding the treat just briefly to get okay. a little extension out of that behavior. Okay. Hey, I got him here. So there she's almost got it. Now she's got it. Didn't click because she was getting scared. Mm -hmm. So you have to really be paying attention to all these little things. Oh, this might be a good one right there. Good. And you can see she's intentionally yeah, like, because yeah. that's going to happen, right? Yeah. Good yeah. job. And then extra reward, you can go back. So try to catch her on your hand. So see how with me, she's like on my hand. Wait, this guy's yeah. giving me lots of food, so I think I'm going to stay right here for now. You're going to dad? Yeah. Yeah, so like, just how he caught. Yeah, Girl. and heal. Her house. Um, around. Because it's not ours anymore. Yeah. All around. We put her in the one perch that she, that's for her food. By the, That's where she gets her dinner. Um, but I go sit in my chair. She's always right over there, but she does the same thing. She always wants to go to the shoulder. Uh -huh. And I tend to keep getting up and putting her back. I put her back. I don't give her treats because I don't want her thinking that that's... You know, Something I can fly over here and I'm gonna take it back when I get a treat. Right. I'd rather her get a treat for staying no. on this on the perch. We tried. Itself. We tried. Yes, so, we did. And then again, I remind myself that she's still an infant, so it's. Did, could you see some of the body language things that we we're paying attention to, to to work on the harness stuff? So there's like there's quite a bit of translation there, other than because two reasons: one, because of her species, it doesn't escalate as quickly. A big part of it's her age. But if she was 20, it'd be more along the lines of what you're getting from Shiloh, like as far as the speed. So right now we've got this huge grace period. And every day, let's say you lose half a percent of her tolerance, pretty soon you get down to whatever you've trained and you don't have like the grace period of being able to make, make bigger mistakes, which is what you saw with me. It was like, nope. I warn you for 3.2 seconds to leave me alone. You're here 3.21 and the face on. So yeah, you like, need yeah. to get your handling on point too because you just rewarded for bad handling. Oh, like so he just gave her a kiss. Actually, that was a default. Well, it's a praise, it's tension, it's reinforcement. Yeah. So it's plus R, plus R. You're probably right about, I would guess, like as long as you aren't 
Yeah, that's why with you it's so ingrained. Because every time you catch her, you're like, hey, bub, go, oh, bub. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Praise attention, praise attention, praise attention. You're also saying good the entire time. So it's technically yeah. click, click, click. There we go. But that's going to take a while for her to be okay with holding both of them? Or is she not going to want me to hold both of them at all? It just she needs to be a slower progression because I. I think you're just trying to jump right into it, kind of like the harness. So it's going to be the same thing where right now she only lasts about a second. Mm -hmm. So it's a click and immediate go back down. And then next time it's a second and a half and a go back down. Does that kind of make sense? So I'm going to try some. Can I have you stay in the corner, please? Mm -hmm. Yep, right there is perfect. I can have you step just a little bit in front of them and give give a recall. And I will do the treating, but go ahead and try to catch her. Okay. And try to catch her properly. So what I'm going to do is offer the treat. Open your hand, open your hand, open your hand. Oh, oh my yeah. knee? Oh, gotcha. So I'm offering the treat further away so you don't have to get that foot over. Oh, okay. Right now, if your treat is your shoulder or it's not your hand, right? So go to open your hand again. Okay, I'm going to offer it over here. Over this way. Keep coming. A little further. A little further. There you go. So she has to finish going where you want her to be to get the treat. Okay. okay. Right? So she's already done the behavior, so we're clicking when she lands. Yeah, that wasn't good. That wasn't good. Right? Fine. Does that make sense? Yes. You yes. guys don't really have that issue, so, it doesn't look like. You're pretty good with the hands. So here, let me try. Yeah, it looks good. I noticed. Let me try. I noticed. I'll try to... Okay. Right, let me see. I can do it. All right. Aaron, come here. Come here. Don't look at me. Come here. And then I'll go over here with it. Mm-hmm. You want that? <laughs> Is it oh? I mean, is so that right now, good or no? She's only offering the one, the, okay. the one foot. Yeah. So we'll start there. Okay. So let's get her comfortable with one foot first. Okay. Because she shouldn't have any in there. So no. let's get her that first baby step. Okay. And then get better at catching her and then just start to reward. If it's like close, treat her over here. Okay. Awesome. So I'm going to try that again. This. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Come <laughs> on. Yeah. So you can hey, lower your treat a little bit. A, can you do oh. a rep? There. Treat that. Good girl. Yeah, that looks better. Do you think she'll fly to you and you can do a rep? Um, if I'm okay. in the right position. Okay. Do you have a treat? I do have one. Okay. I'm going to move you first. You second. could even do like just a step up rep versus a, a flight. Oh, okay. And what are you going for? Just to show? Just show oh, you know. Can you step up? Okay, got it. All right. Hi. Okay, so she's starting to get uncomfortable. I'm not okay. going to fight her. I'm going to okay. change her mental misdirection there, put her back somewhere else, rather than like uh, if I fight her forever, she's just going to learn that the thumb's bad, especially with the military. Um. If you're like, if you're fighting, you're you're fighting the foot. Change the snare, change something. Don't just fight because you'll lose eventually. Oh, see how she automatically goes for the other side of my mm -hmm. thumb? Yeah. So, so hold on, hold on. I want to show you something. Okay. Okay, I want to get both of you guys to look at this. What is the difference between how you are holding her <laughs> and how Dave is holding her? Mm-hmm. Come on. Well, your hand, her she's, hand is down low, is, and you've got... So you've got your eye hand contact hand. here. Do you I'm, think that she can run down his arm and up his arm no. to get to the shoulder. Yeah, he has created a mountain. You have created a walkway. Um, you are all level. So it's very easy for her to retreat to the shoulder. Okay. Dave has made this the most comfortable, highest point. So she's more likely to stay here she's because otherwise she has yeah. to slide down this slide, climb okay. up this ramp, Okay. right? Yep. So if you can you make go. your hand the most comfortable for her, she will stay there. Okay. Oh. Okay. That was a good reaction. I, I was trying to listen and watch, and you you felt her like start to fight it. So I'm not 
I don't have this lesson like repeat enough to be super articulate with it, but sometimes there's, we have to take what we are being offered. And it might not be the end result, but if we start by just taking whatever they're willing to offer, then we can shape it later. Mm -hmm. So in your specific case, what we want is this. Okay. You're getting this yep. and you're converting it to there. Cool. Take it. Okay. And like, I'd use that. That's better than nothing. But then in a month from now or a week from now, this is your new normal. Mm -hmm. It's not what you want, but let's accept it. And now that that's consistent, let's work on a little further. Okay. Um, another kind of abstract way to look at that is, is with our blue throat of macaw, Jinx, I want him to fly to me in our show environment, do a circle, come back and land on me. I want him to appear, do a circle and land on me. Well, from all aspects of training, he has no desire to land on me if Jamie's around. So also in a, in a show environment, if I train a bird to do something in an empty arena, with all the lights, the sound, the music, the pyro, I get it to 100%. However, the second I start adding people, the bird's like, no, this is a new trick. Mm -hmm. So we had to train these in, in a live environment. So to get Jinx to do this full circle and come back and land on me, I had to take what he was offering. So I didn't want him going to Jamie, but that was all I had to work with. So I would make him appear and I'd, he'd fly to Jamie. He'd get a treat. Then I'd make him appear and I'd give him a little forward arch and he'd fly to Jamie, get a treat. And after about a week, he was appearing, and I'd give a little forward arch, he'd make a, a, a turn and land 30 feet away on Jamie. And then, the next week, Jamie would say a little closer, a little closer, a little closer. So now he's doing an arch, and he's coming back, and he's landing on her. It's still not what I want, but I'm using whatever he's willing to offer. Yeah. Then I have Jamie standing right next to me for another week, and he's doing these circles, and he's landing right next to me. Then the next week, Jamie's not on stage. He's already conditioned. There's this repetition we call behavioral momentum, or the Simon Says Effect. So he knows to come back and look for her. Oh, she's not there? Oh, I'll catch you. Here's a treat. So I got what I wanted, but it was yeah. I was nowhere there from the beginning. So sometimes in bird training, we have to start with, uh, which by the way, he'll do this all the time now. Like he's yeah. consistently comes back to me. Even like we did some TV stuff, and there's like boom, boom mics and cameras on arms and like unbelievably difficult snares. And he's like, nope, I got it. And he's still, if I'm holding a full walnut and Jamie's right next to me, he'll go past the walnut to land on her, mm. right? But I took whatever they were offering because some of these problems that you're going to encounter are more complex than can be solved in one session. But if you can start to find like, oh, I can't do this, but he'll accept this, start there and just work towards where you need to go, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. When you mentioned earlier that um, I think you said she loves to wrestle. I would assume she does because she, she'll sit on the edge of my chair and I'll be on my phone or stuff and I'll be relaxing and she'll just roll over and she'll start kicking and she'll try and pull my fingers in. Yeah. And, uh, so I would assume that's what it is. So, yeah, and so the, the challenge with saying it that way, and this is like another kind of overall lesson I would really like you guys to take home, is when you start hearing those absolutes, challenge, challenge each other like, hey, you just said he loves wrestling. Does does she, or she loves wrestling? Does she actually love it? Or what if she hates it? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let's play that game. And I would do, we do that all the time, um, mostly with clients. But we do we catch ourselves with our own birds that way too. Um, and so right now, wrestling might seem like a young, playful, fun thing. It could turn into a heightened aggressive, uh, a heightened hormonal. It'll be heightened. I believe, and if it's reinforced now, it's likely to continue in the future. So if you're operating in the space of like, oh, but she loves it, now you're gonna feel guilty if you don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> right? So if you start to challenge those, those absolutes and say, okay, she appears to want to wrestle. Okay, we can deal with those facts. Is this going to help my relationship now and later? Maybe now it's fun, but it's going to increase heightened later. So I it would could discourage. possibly trigger hormones later too. But yeah. I think the main thing with you guys for baby bird is that there's a lot of things that are acceptable right now, but try to picture those behaviors escalating. What does that look like if it was an exaggerated version of that same behavior? Is it still okay? Or does it hurt? Is it okay with other people in the house? You know, just start picturing a different environment, different circumstances, because baby birds, 
it's easy to let a lot of things slide because they're babies. Yeah. Like playing with your fingers. I was Doesn't still, hurt. Try not to interrupt. They're a baby. <laughs> Yeah. But imagine if it's escalated. What does that look like? Yeah. What does that look like from an adult bird? Is it still okay? Because you can't just say for their entire babyhood, mm -hmm. chewing on my fingers is okay. Mm -hmm. The second it hurts, mm -hmm. not okay. Yeah. But you've said for months it's okay. Yeah. That's very confusing to them. So yeah. really you got to think with baby birds, okay, this is, this is cute, doesn't hurt. It probably will in the future. How can I de-escalate it? So I'll give her something else to chew on. I'll make sure we have those tiny toys around to just kind of give her instead. I'll distract her with such and such. You know what? I haven't really interacted with her. We've just kind of been hanging out. Let's have an actual engaged session together. You know, whatever that looks like. Yeah. But just remember that with baby birds, the behaviors escalate. They don't okay. stay cute forever. So, so are you saying that like... I don't know, um, like when he's wrestling with her, is that something that he's n not going to want to do when it, when she gets older? I mean, Would you do it with this one? No. No. She used to love doing the same stuff. Really? <laughs> naturally played. And uh, I was like, no way, because, I mean, she just wants to bite and do all this stuff. No. And I figured, man, this is going to get way bad quick. And, I, um, and I'm speaking 100% from experience. Because I ah. thought the same thing. I was like, oh, this bird loves this. And so I, I played at the level that I thought that macaw wanted to play. And, and then it got to the point where... It got to the point where uh, he would be super aggressive and like we'd be, we'd be hanging out um, and he would just reach down and, and bite me for, for what I thought was oh, no reason. Wow. But it could be that he's like, hey, let's play. Right? Which, so again, play is an absolute. Is it, is it play? I don't know. It's heightened. <laughs> And when he, so he associated me with heightened. Maybe he liked it. I, I think he liked it because he kept trying to instigate it. Sorry. Yeah, because she'll nip. She'll... Hi, Bob. <laughs> no, we didn't do it right. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do it right. You guys are going to have that as homework for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so, she, we get plenty of time. She does that. Uh, she flies a, Here, from, I'll do this. from corner to corner a lot. So. Okay, so hopefully we did not leave this baby bird's owners feeling too overwhelmed, but I'm pretty sure we did. But if the you can take one of the big takeaways from this, that's really hard for me to say, if the you can take <laughs> one of these big takeaways, it is to pick your top three things that you need to get done. Uh, we all have a list a million miles long of things we want to achieve with our pet parrots, and just pick the top three. That way you can focus on the one, and then the second one, and then the third one, and then once that's done, Look at the other million things remaining. And it's like that no matter if you have a baby bird or an adult bird. I think the one thing that we do see in common though with baby bird owners is that they often are like, I'm not really experiencing any issues. My bird's awesome. And we're like, your bird's a baby. <laughs> That's what Which that is. Which is a hard pill to swallow when you like, you know, they came here with like, oh, so much enthusiasm and passion and excitement. And I love that, but I want to keep that. And I yeah. need to be realistic and honest with them and say like, hey, yeah, it is because it's a baby. So if you want to keep it, Let's make sure we're avoiding the mistakes now so that you have a lifetime of success with your baby bird when it's not a baby. Heck yeah. Check out the baby bird course.